Hi, welcome back to another video in our tutorials on Kotlin. This video is part of a series where you can learn how to become a software developer using Kotlin, and eventually we're going to use it in an Android development course. So you'll become an app developer, but first of all, you have to learn the language. In this video, we are focusing in on some functions that you can use with strings. So in Kotlin, the string functions allow you to do a lot of manipulation with words and sentences. And so we're going to do a demonstration here. First of all, I'm going to just paste in some code that allows us to have two strings. So we're going to have movie one and movie two, and you can put in any kind of a movie you like. I'm going to use the Dark Knight and a New Hope. So let's put in a command that says the movie is called movie one. And I'm going to paste in again, and this time I'm going to type in movie two. So we should be able to run this and see two different movies. So let's go to the console area and you can see that the movies are indeed being printed. So now let's take a look at some of the things that are built into the string function. So let's make a variable called uppercase name one and I'm going to work with movie one. Put a dot and then you'll see that there's a whole bunch of functions you can run including one called uppercase. Now the goal of uppercase is to convert all of the letters into their capital form. So let's print off the movie again, and this time print the uppercase version. So let's go ahead and run it, and let's see what's in the console. And you can see now that the Dark Knight has all capital letters. So that's a pretty handy function. So you can probably guess that there is a function called lowercase and uppercase. So let's go ahead and copy and paste the uh, code that we just wrote. And this time I'm going to use movie two and we're going to show it without any capital letters. So we're going to convert everything to lowercase. Go ahead and run that again. And this time when you see it, you should see the Dark Knight is now printed in lowercase. Now, why did it print the Dark Knight? Uh, let's try changing that to movie two. I wanted to have the, the New Hope actually is what I wanted to print. And so now you can see a New Hope is printed in lowercase. Now working with strings, you have the option to do something called string addition, which is really called concatenation. So we'll say that both movies is a variable that equals movie one plus movie two. And now we're gonna print both movies. So let's go ahead and run that. And you should see that now they are concatenated. So here it says the Dark Knight and A New Hope are both pushed together. So no space is included either. So what if we wanted to put a space? So we could add a third string and that third string could be just a blank string or an empty character. So let's see what that does. I'm going to run it again. And now you can see that a blank is now between the two movie titles. Now that's a pretty straightforward way to concatenate uh, strings. But let's look at our editor and it says, there's another way to do this, by the way. It says string concatenation can be converted to a template. Interesting. Let's see what happens when I do that. And this time you can see that it says you could just put a string and then use the dollar sign notation, leaving a space between them. And if I run it, I get the exact same result. And so it's recommending that that might be more readable. It also might be faster for the compiler to run. Here's another function that uh, you might not know about. It's called plus. So let's make something called both movies two, a new variable. And we're going to take movie one, put a dot, and then the plus function, and then followed by movie two. So this should give us the same result. And let's see, I'm gonna to have to print that off and use both movies two, so let's run it. And you can see now that we got the exact same result as we did before. We're attaching two different uh, strings together using this plus function. Now I'm gonna add a new feature that you haven't seen yet. It's called a for loop. And it works well with strings, so I'm just going to introduce it here, but we'll do another video uh, specifically on counting and using loops. But for means for each letter in the movie. So it means go down the list of the letters in the string and do an operation. So for each letter, we're going to do a print statement. So the print statement is going to take the letter, add a space to it, and then print the capital letter. So it's kind of an interesting format. Let's see what the results look like when I run it. And you can see at the end here, we are doing threes now. So T is already capitalized. We add a space and then a capital version of it. So that doesn't change. But the second one is different. You can see we start with an H, a space, and then a capital H. 
and an interesting pattern that we get all the way through here. And so the for loop is a way that you can go through each item in a string and perform an operation. Let's just put in an X, for example, if I wanted to see something interesting, what would happen instead of a space, I put an X and you get some kind of an unreadable string almost with all these X's. So there is a whole lot of operations that you can use with a string. So let's just take a quick look through them and I'm going to let you explore. So as I type movie one and then a dot, you can see that there are a lot of uh, things that we can call. So if you wanted to get the length of this string, that returns an integer. That'll tell you how many letters are in your string. Uh, chars, so it will create a list of characters that are in a stream. And that's kind of interesting. Uh, there's uppercase, lowercase that we've seen. And you can see we can have an equal statement. We can compare strings together. So we can ask, is this name like that name? Or is this password match that password? So you can do comparisons. So all the way through here, there are a lot and lot of different functions that we can run. And so if you uh, wanted to look each of these up, you can just Google them and you will find nice examples. So I just want to make you aware of them so that you can explore uh, the options that are there. So that's a quick introduction on strings. In the next video, we're going to work with conditionals, which is the famous if then statements that come in most languages. This allows your program to make decisions and of course enhances your ability to do a lot of skills with the Kotlin language. So we'll see you in the next video while we look at the if statement.